How to record your live streams using Streamlabs desktop. Welcome to another Gaging Gadgets live streaming tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to record your live streams using Streamlabs desktop. So this software includes a ton of awesome features, including selective recording. So if when you're live streaming, you have alerts or a chat box on your screen, we can use selective recording to leave those out so that when we upload our videos to YouTube, those items are not included. We can also use multi-track audio to ensure that maybe a sounds for alerts are also not included. On top of that, we can also create small clips while we're recording and then edit them all together within the Streamlabs app so that then we can share those as shorts or even just videos on social media. And I do want to thank Streamlabs for sponsoring this video. Streamlabs is a very powerful service for anyone that live streams. Not only do they have applications you can use on your desktop, or your phone, they also have tons of different widgets that will make your stream more immersive and professional looking. And check the description, I'll have a link down there where you can get $10 off your first month of Streamlabs Prime. So to begin with recording our live streams, I wanna show you something really cool called selective recording. So if you have a scene set up where maybe you have a chat box or maybe a sponsored banner, something like that, and you don't wanna include that in your recordings maybe because the sponsor didn't pay for that, or maybe the chat gets in the way. In Streamlabs desktop, we can actually selectively record different sources so that those items don't have to be included in the recording. To do that here within the editor, all we need to do is go down to the sources and you'll see this little icon next to folders. If we turn that on, all the sources down here get a new icon where then we can decide if they're included in both the stream and the recording, if they're only in the live stream, or if they're only in the recording which is really cool. So you can exclude things such as alerts so that those will only be included in the live stream. They won't be interrupting your recordings. Additionally, with Streamlabs desktop, we can also do a similar thing with audio and that's using multiple track audio within the app. Basically what this does, when you import that video into your video editor, you won't see one audio track, you'll see two and you can configure what is included in each. So if you wanna have your game on one audio track and then your mic on another, you can then selectively edit when those are gonna be included in your video, which is really cool. So to set up multiple audio tracks, we first need to go down into the settings. Then in the settings in the left sidebar, select output. Once on output, we wanna make sure the output mode is advanced and then select recording. And then right here, you'll be able to see the audio tracks. Now by default, you only have one audio track and you can have up to six. So this means you can have six different audio tracks that you can edit from. So one with game, one with your mic, and the other with your in-game voice chat. You could have all different audio tracks for those and include or remove them in your editing process. Now I'm gonna separate my desktop audio from my mic. And to do that, I'm gonna add two different tracks. Once you're done, select done. After that, we need to go down to the mixer down here and the mixer shows all the audio that is included in your stream. From here, go up to select the gear for the advanced audio settings. Go to the right and you'll see the new tracks available where if I wanna have my mic on track two, it'll be the only item on track two. And then my desktop audio, which is my game on track three, that'll be the only item on track three. So now in my recordings, they'll have three tracks, one with everything, another with my mic, and then one with my game audio only. So I can close that. And now when I record my stream in any way, the video exported will have three tracks. So when it comes to recording your live streams, you may find that recording your entire live streaming and editing it down is just too much work, but the Streamlabs desktop app actually gives you a way to do that while you're live streaming. So you can use replay buffer, which allows you to basically save an instant replay of your live stream. And you can start doing that with the button down here next to record called start replay buffer. So if I turn that on, it's now buffering and keeping a portion of my recording. So if I wanna save that on the fly, I can do that and it creates its own clip for it, which is really cool. So in that way, I don't have to record my entire live stream, edit everything. I can just use the clips and edit those. Now you can customize the length of those clips by going down into the settings, selecting the gear, then going to output and under replay buffer right here, this is where you can set the maximum replay time. So this is how long your clip will be when you generate it. And if you wanna make this longer, keep in mind that only affects your memory. So if you have a ton of extra RAM, you should be fine. Now with this setting, use stream output. This is where you can configure selective recording for the replays. So if you want them to use the sources that are in the stream, 
Go ahead and make sure this is checked. But if you want them to use selective recording so that maybe some of the sources are excluded, go ahead and uncheck this. And while we're in the settings, we can also set up a hotkey on our keyboard so that if we hit that button while we're live streaming, it'll record that clip. And to do that, all we need to do is go to hotkeys right here, and then you'll see save replay. Then just select into the little text box right here, hit your desired hotkey, and then select done. And now with the replay buffer enabled, whenever I hit that hotkey on my keyboard, it's gonna record that as a clip. And I can view that clip over here in the highlighter. All right, so once the highlighter loads, you'll see all the clips that were created using the replay buffer. So basically with the highlighter, we can combine all these clips together to create an edited, professionally looking video. Then we can upload as a clip on Twitch or maybe to YouTube as a video, something like that. You can go into any of these videos, preview them. You can also trim them if you want to select a portion of your video to be included in the final video. Additionally, if you want to delete any of these, simply hit the delete button right here. And then if there's any of these that you do not want to include in the final edited clip, all you need to do is uncheck them. Over to the right side, we have the different transition types that you can choose. And this will be displayed between each clip and also the transition duration. If you have background music you want to add, you can toggle that switch and then upload the music file and that'll be added to the final video. Once you've made all your trims and you have your transitions and music files set up, you can preview the video by selecting preview. It'll render a preview and this shouldn't take too long where then you can see the transitions right here as you can see and watch the clip the whole way through to see if you're happy with it. Once you're happy with it and you're ready to export it, just select export. Then you can name it, you can select the save location, and then you can configure the resolution and frame rate, which is really cool. Once you select export, it'll begin the export process and you can even upload it directly to YouTube. So you don't need to download it, then upload it. Streamlabs desktop will upload it directly there. All right, so that was the replay buffer and highlighter section of Streamlabs desktop. Now, before we wrap up this video, I wanna show you a couple settings changes you can make within Streamlabs desktop that'll give you the best recording quality. And to do that, we just need to open up the settings. So go down to the gear in the bottom left, select that. Once you get into the settings, under the general section, under output right here, you can see that you can have Streamlabs automatically record your streams when you go live. So that can be a great feature if that's something you're interested in. After that, in the settings, we just wanna to go to the video section. First, we wanna make sure that the base resolution is the same resolution as the monitor that you are streaming. So that's what I have here, 1080p on this 1080p monitor. Now the output resolution, I recommend matching the base resolution if possible, but this could affect performance, so you can bring it down to a more reasonable resolution. I'll be doing 1080 though. Then for the downscale filter, Streamlabs does recommend Lansco. And then finally for the FPF values, if your stream involves a lot of action or maybe video, you probably wanna do 60 frames per second, but you can always bring that down to 30 if you notice a performance hit. And that's gonna be it for the settings, so now we can go ahead and select done. All right, so that's how you record your live streams with all the different features included in Streamlabs Desktop. If you have any questions about this, leave a comment below, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like to see more Streamlabs tips and tutorials, check the links in the description. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to my channel, Engaging Gadgets, for more gadget reviews and tech tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.